I am very glad that we are meeting together on this special occasion of Science Day which is being internationally held every year, particularly in the context of this challenging period of Corona times. I am very glad to be participating with you in this a kind of togetherness, a Baitak, a small <coughs> conference on a very important pertinent topic, the science and spirituality are in a large context in a broad perspective, science and religion complementary. This is a concept of Vedantic perspective which highlighted by Swami Vivekananda in the earlier stages of this scientific ages. When we are talking about science and spirituality are complementary, we should take into our consideration the latest developments and a fast strides taken by the scientific community in the field of discoveries of a theory of everything, etc., with its complementary views in the great system of thought developed by the ancient sages of India, Rishis, a system which we call as the Vedantic system or we can consider in this context today the Vedantic perspective, science and spirituality are complementary. As Swami Vivekananda and later on by eminent sages and scientists alike like Swami Ranganadhanandaji, particularly in both in East and West and uh, eminent scientists like Frigio Capra, author of the theory, uh, the Tao of physics, the dancing Huli masters, etc. And even our Indian doctor like Deepak Chopra, ageless body and timeless mind. Their contributions and thought provoking ideas in this topic. Religion as expounded as a verified and verifiable science has a message for all humanity. Physical science employing technology may build a first class house and equip it with radio, television of the latest model and other gadgets. The social security measures of a modern welfare state may provide everything necessary for a happy and full life in this world. The owner may give the house such charming names as uh, we, can, we see peace retreat or happy home. Yet none of these can by themselves ensure that the people will live in that house in peace or happiness, for that depends to a large extent on another source of strength and nourishment, another type of knowledge and discipline. The knowledge and discipline proceeding from the science and technique of religion. Here I am using the word religion in the most deepest and broadest aspects, not in the narrow sectarian uh, ideals. If we can muster the help of the positive sciences to create a healthy external environment and the help of the science of spirituality create, 
to create a healthy internal environment then there can be hope to achieve total life fulfillment not otherwise this is a testament of the upanishads but today this is not the picture that modern civilization presents to us in this technological civilization there is a feeling of being in worldly impoverished and empty in an environment of wealth power and pleasure people are full of tension and sorrow doubt and uncertainty all the time juvenile delinquency drunkenness child abuse suicide and an increasing variety of other maladies and individual and social distortions are ever on the increase why if we can seriously ponder over it because we are not in worldly satisfied but smitten with an anemia and boredom arising from the limitations of our sense bound welton chong indian thinkers foresaw this predicament ages ago here is what the ancient swatashwatara upanishad said about this which can we can apply to the modern age thought this upanishad tells even though men may through their technical skill roll up space like a piece of leather still there will be no end of sorrow for them without the realization of the luminous one within we have to seriously consider this statement which is a statement of fact arthur schopenhauer wrote more than 150 years ago in his opus the world as will and idea all men who are secure from want and care now that at last they have thrown off all other burdens become a burden to themselves now today we are our own major burden and problem we can tackle and solve this problem not just by going in for more positivistic science more technology more life amenities more socio political or macro biological manipulations of human conditions but by cultivating the science of serious religion says from vivekananda very correctly you must bear in mind that religion does not consist in talk or doctrines or books but in experiencing in realization it is not learning but being this being we should very seriously note it is in this sense that india understood religion and it is this idea of religion that swami vivekananda expounded in the west and the east in his powerful voice the end and aim of religion as india's ancient teachers have expressed it is the experience anubhava of god through the steady growth in spiritual awareness this is the touchstone of religion there is such a thing as the spiritual growth of the individual step by step we experience this growth just as we see a plant growing or a building rising step by step brick by brick when we live the life of religion not in the sense of narrow dogma but stressing spiritual values and practicing spiritual disciplines strength comes to us consciousness becomes expanded sympathies grow and widen and we feel that we are growing into better men and women it is only the strength that proceeds from such inward spiritual growth and development that will enable an individual to digest assimilate and discipline the energies released by the progress of scientific technology such a person alone has the strength and wisdom to convert the chaos life of life into a pattern of peace and happiness with harmony and general welfare
if the spiritual value system of religion is take away from taken away from human society what remains is simple barbarism ancient civilizations were destroyed by barbarians bred outside those civilizations but modern civilization if it is to go the same way will be destroyed by barbarians bred within that civilization itself what can save us from this predicament is a little christian love as we say in our hearts for our neighbors in the words of veteran russell or a little more altruism in the words of the late professor peter sorokin of harvard university this love comes from the practice of religion as defined by the most world's authentic spiritual teachers swami vivekananda gave a scientific definition of religion religion is the manifestation of the divinity already in man now comes the question can religion really accomplish anything asked vivekananda he proceeded to answer it in this way it can it brings to man eternal life it has made man what he is and will make of this human animal a god capital letters g o d that is what religion can do take religion from human society and what will remain nothing but a forest of brutes sense happiness is not the goal of humanity wisdom jnana is the goal of all life we find that man enjoys his intellect more than an animal enjoys its senses and we see that man enjoys his spiritual nature even more than his rational intellectual nature so the highest wisdom must be the spiritual knowledge with this knowledge will come joy bliss or ananda is not our scientific and technological civilization of today ready for such a message the need today is to view science in its proper perspective the perspective of total human knowledge and welfare this is one of the several vital contributions of swami vivekananda to modern thought dealing with the complementary character of eastern contributions to religion and western contributions to science he said in his new york lecture on february 23 1896 in the concert hall of madison square garden on my master each of these types has its grandeur each has its glory the pre adjustment the present adjustment will be the harmonizing the mingling of these two ideals to the oriental the world of spirit is as real as to the occidental is the world of senses in the spiritual the oriental finds everything he wants or hopes for it in it he finds all that makes life real to him to the occidental he is a dreamer to the oriental the occidental is a dreamer playing with ephemeral temporary toys and he loves to think that the grown up men and women should make so much of a handful of matter which they will have to leave sooner or later each calls the other a dreamer but the oriental ideal is as necessary for the progress of human race as is the occidental and i think it is more necessary machines never made mankind happy and never will make he who is trying to make us believe in this claim that happiness is in the machine but it is always in the mind that man alone who is the lord of his mind can become happy and none else and what after all is this power of machinery why should a man who can send a current of electricity through a wire be called a very great man and a very intelligent man does not nature do a million times more than that every moment why not then fall down and worship this nature education has to enable all students to achieve at least 
a fraction of the synthesis of East and West. Spirituality and science, contemplation and action. It is the science of spirituality, the supreme science, Paravidya, that fosters in people ethical, aesthetic and spiritual values, including the moral values associated with pure science. The harmony of all these values and the intrinsic harmony between science and religion, always upheld in Vedanta, became revealed in our own time in the deep spiritual kinship between Swami Vivekananda. The representative of modern scientific and philosophical knowledge in his discipleship with Sri Ramakrishna, the full embodiment of spiritual wisdom. All such values emerge from out of the depths of the human spirit at a certain stage of human evolution and after the achievement of some measure of mastery of the environment by individuals for their physical needs. It is folly to believe or to expect that such values will automatically result from industry or from technological manipulations of physical nature or from the wealth resulting from such achievements. Protesting against this widely held folly, Bertrand Russell said in his Impact of Science and Society, the machine as an object of adoration is a modern form of satan and its worship is a modern diabolism. Whatever else may be mechanical, values are not. And this is something which no political philosopher must forget. College and university education is called higher education, but it is obvious that the spiritual education Swami Vivekananda received from Sri Ramakrishna should be considered the highest for it brought East and West into harmony as well as the sacred and the secular and religion and science besides building strength of character and fostering infinite compassion. Education from school through university should lead to this highest level if the objective of education is to be fulfillment. Sri Ramakrishna's experience and example also make it clear that individuals can enter into and benefit from the spiritual education from any stage or level of their school or college education. Wisdom can accompany, enliven and creatively stimulate knowledge at any level, primary, secondary, undergraduate and postgraduate. It is necessary now. It is also equally clear that without a little of that wisdom, knowledge at any of these levels can in the long run become not a blessing but a curse to oneself and to society, a breeding ground of pride, selfishness, exploitation and violence on the one hand and alienation, loneliness and psychic breakdown on the other. These ills have afflicted societies and civilizations in the past and led them to decay and death. Western civilization too is facing these challenges today in as much as India also is currently absorbing Western civilization at a fast pace and is already experiencing some of its bad side effects. The people of India will be wise if they too open themselves up to this eternal message of the science of human being in depth, Adhyatma Vidya, and generate a fresh capital of spiritual energy with a view to digesting, assimilating and transforming the physical and mental resources of this highly technical age. This modern age demands that we meet the challenges of life with the challenge of an adequate philosophy. Vedanta as a philosophy is not only unafraid of the advances of scientific knowledge but actually welcomes it warmly. Truth is its passion. Like modern physical science, Vedanta promotes the critical inquiring spirit along with detachment, precision and the challenge of verification. No field of knowledge can foster 
these moral and intellectual virtues and graces unless it is on the track of impersonal truth and does not countenance mere personal or subject to fancies and satisfactions this scientific characteristic of vedanta was boldly brought out by shankaracharya while presenting the great theme of inquiry into brahman in his commentary on the brahma sutras and while expounding the scientific frame of mind in his commentary on the bhagavad gita in the brahma sutra commentary he makes a distinction between vastu tantra knowledge knowledge depending on and arising from the vastu or existing reality and purusha tantra jnana knowledge knowledge depending upon the purusha or person that is the moods fancies and interests of a person knowledge of an existing fact is independent of the knowing person it is the discovery of facts not knowledge creative of facts on the contrary knowledge depending on a person is susceptible of being held altered or abolished depending on the person concerned as observed by adi shankaracharya there is a vast field of personal human preferences which constitute this latter type of knowledge <coughs> and they have their legitimate role to play in human life god but god and soul as understood in vedanta are not mere subjective fancies they belong to the field of dispassionate enquiry into and knowledge of the brahman immediate and direct which is also the innermost self of all as we learned earlier from the brahmaranya upanishad which i quoted before this truth of god or brahman as the inner self of all is the only rational logical sanction for ethics and morality in it is an ever present reality as a knower behind all acts of perception and knowledge who cannot be made an object of knowledge at to negate that knower is also an impossibility for he or it is the very self of him who does this negation as shankaracharya says in his commentary on the brahma sutras if we understand consciousness or awareness we can have a serious point to ponder in this quotation this brahman is not only any extra cosmic deity of the usual type met with in a monotheism which is only a logical postulate equally capable of being enthroned or dethroned by human reason or maintained by faith alone but incapable of being verified whereas the brahman of the upanishads on the other hand being the self of all is quoting shankaracharya again the very basis and consummation of experience because the knowledge of brahman is consummated in the experience of brahman <coughs> and refers therefore to an existing fact in one's own self brahman is unknown when one is in a state of spiritual ignorance but it is not unknowable being the very self of the knower and hence can be more intimately known than any sense object this knowledge is abstracted and obscured by the self not self mix up in normal experience between self and not self it is being mixed up in normal experience and calls for a discriminative enquiry Re- discrimination between reality and unreality between permanent and impermanent the sages of the upanishads realized through such a penetrating enquiry and such this infinite and immortal atman or self in themselves within behind this five ever changing um layers or sheets this body the nervous system the mind the intellect 
under bliss of egolessness as in deep sleep in support we cite uh, yama the teacher of nachiketas brahmavidya to young student we met before in the katha upanishad this atman being hidden in all beings is not manifest to all but it can be revealed by all those realized by all those who are trained to enquire into subtle truths by means of their sharp subtle pure reason we get an echo of this concept of the sheets covering reality that is layers covering reality in the 20th century biology with respect to the first three in the taittiriya upanishad we meet this phrase tenesha purna purnah this is infilled by that compare with this infilling what american biologist george gaylord simpsons is saying <coughs> he says a broad classification of the sciences into physical biological and social corresponds with three levels or organizations of matter and energy and not levels only but also quite distinct kinds of organization the three are sharply increasing orders of complexity and each includes the lower grades vital organization is more indicate than physical organization and it is added to and does not replace physical organization which is also fully involved in vital organization social organization retains and sums up the complexities of both these and adds its own still greater complexities the impurities of the mind constitute the abstraction to the knowledge of this ever present divine dimension these impurities are centered in the ego in its attachments and aversions and bondage to the organic system search for truth either in the external world which yields scientific knowledge or in the internal world which yields spiritual experience calls for the elimination of those impurities which alone enables the mind to penetrate from the surface to the depths of nature external as well as internal it is the scientific spirit and temper that is highlighted in sri krishna's exhortation to arjuna in the bhagavad gita and which is amplified in shankaracharya's commentary on the same by the delusion of the pious of opposites arising from attachment and aversion o descendant of bharata all beings are fallen into deep delusion of at birth o scorcher of foes but those with virtuous deeds whose impurities have been destroyed they freed from all the delusions of the pious of abodits worship me with firm resolve commenting on the first the shankaracharya observes for it is well known that knowledge of things as they are even in the external world cannot rise in the minds of those who are under the thraldom of attachment and aversion if this is so what wonder is there that knowledge of the inner self which is faced with many obstacles does not arise in those who are enslaved by them and consequently are deeply deluded hence all beings whose reason is obstructed and deeply deluded by the delusion of these pious of opposites do not know me who am i their ver- very self and hence also they do not worship me as their own self so this is a, a first step regarding the topic which we are dealing with synthesis between science and true spirituality then we can see the rationalism and the march of reason in the upanishads as well as in the scientific discoveries in in the next class or nearby class thank you very much as it took almost 
20 to 30 minutes. I think that this is sufficient presently for now to just to see that in Swami Vivekananda's writings and his contributions, many strides were taken, harmonizing most broad perspective of universal religious ideals and ideas with modern science. So if we can look into those inspiring messages, we can have a positive perspective in the both fields and have a harmony and a unique dialogue between science and religion. So ponder, let us ponder over these points which we discussed now and then we can meet in the next session to see further if it is possible. Thank you very much.